Is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus 3D scanner more than a party gag? We're gonna find out right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So this is not a smartphone review. I'm gonna warn you, this is only about the 3D scanning camera that's inside of the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And this camera is pretty interesting because if you've seen the announcement at the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus keynote, it looks like that you can actually scan 3D objects in the real world and then print them out. So I want to find out if that's really true or if it's just a marketing gag or a party gag uh, to impress your friends. So what we are going to do right now is we're going outside in the garden. We're going to scan some real world objects and then bring them to the computer to look at them in the 3D modeling software to check if they can actually be printed out or if it's just garbage. So let's get outside and do the 3D scanning. So we're out in the garden and I have a few objects prepared that we're going to scan with the Note 10 Plus. The first one is this lion statue here. The second one is going to be this teddy bear. Then we have something printed from Thingiverse, this T-Rex figure. Of course, the usual Benji, not to miss out on this. And then we have some more difficult things like this glass here and also something reflective this gardening pot, it's going to be interesting how the camera picks up on these objects. So the way this is supposed to work with the 3D scanner software is you're going to walk around the object and then at the end the picture gets rendered into a 3D object. So let's start. So the, the final model has been rendered. What is a little bit strange um, is that we are somehow missing the bottom of this uh, statue. So it, it some, seems to cut off the lower layer, probably because it thinks it is actually the bottom. Um, I'm going to look at it in the 3D modeling software. So let's go with the second object and see how the teddy bear comes out. So for the teddy bear test, I've actually put something gray underneath the teddy bear because I found that the black surface of this table is actually distracting the scanner to not see the actual surface pretty correct. And so I decided that I go with some grayish surface for the next kind of tests and maybe repeat the line test again. And then we do the T-Rex test. But this, this uh, seems to be a little bit harder. Let's try to keep the angle. But it seems that it's not that easy. Okay, so this is really not, not working. So with this kind of small object, and it's not yet the Benchy, uh, it's already pretty small, uh, obviously, for the scanner, so it has a hard time tracking the object's position uh, when, when I'm moving around. And um, I suppose that it's get even getting harder using the Benchy. So let's see how the Benchy test is going to work, if it's going to work at all. Okay, there seems to be a very small window where this is actually going to work, a uh, window of distance, I'd say. So let's, okay, couldn't make a model. Something went wrong. Okay, let's try again. So, and now I need to circle carefully around the object and not lose the object. And starts jumping around. So let's see if there's anything coming out of the skin. <laughs> okay, so this is basically worthless, I'd say. Let's try to scan the glass, I hope you can see it. It has a really hard time to actually see the glass. Okay. That's what I was expecting. It, it actually doesn't see the glass. It's, it's looking through the glass and let's see some shadows of the glass probably, but not the real glass. Just a blob of nothing. Okay, so last try, the watering pot. Let's see if that is, is working somehow. Looks a little bit similar to the glass. Uh, 
because of it being reflective, it thinks that the light is coming from somewhere else. Okay, that looks weird, but let's save it anyways. So you've seen it's not that easy to scan objects with this kind of camera. Let's get back to the studio and have a look at the actual 3D models that come out of the camera and check out if they are actually usable to print them on a 3D printer. Okay guys, back in the studio. I think you've seen there is some problems. I think um, you've all seen that the camera is, is not that bad, but it's actually struggling with different situations. So the first try with the lion was actually pretty decent. Um, so we're gonna look at the 3D model right now. Um, the teddy bear was still working, but I had some issues. I had to try it several times until I got it right. And then the smaller objects, the T-Rex, the Banshee, are uh, basically not usable at all. So the outcomes are, I don't expect to, to see anything in a computer that we can use. And also the glass and the watering pot are not usable because the camera can't just see transparent and reflective objects. So it really only works with certain dimensions of objects. They have to be at a decent size. You have to have the right distance. That was also a little bit of an issue. You have to find the right spot where you can start scanning. And then you will have to have an object that is pretty well lighted and that you can surround with the camera. So there are certain conditions where this might work, but let's head over to the computer and see how the results are. So we're opening the first file, which should be the lion. And yeah, let's have a look. So that's the lion. Um, it's actually not too bad. From what I can see here, we have some detail. So we can see the hair, um, the faces. So uh, yeah, it's recognizable, I'd say. Um, what is missing is the detail on this plate here on the sign um, and also the bottom plate is missing. So I think the software detected the bottom plate of the statue as the actual floor. So it cut off the floor. That's a little bit of an issue. Uh, but overall, I'd say it's not too bad. It has some detail and it could be used for a 3D print, although the detail could be better. So the next object is the teddy bear and the teddy bear was a little bit more difficult. I needed, I think, three tries to get something uh, decent. And yeah, let's have a look. And it doesn't look too bad. So that's definitely a teddy bear. It's recognizable, although uh, the face is a little bit uh, smudged. So the nose looks a little bit strange. Uh, surprisingly, it catched the little loophole here between the arm and the leg. So I didn't expect that. On the other side, that didn't work out too well. So it's all one surface here. Um, besides that, I mean, we have some detail of the of this little shirt that the teddy bear was wearing. And yeah, the third one should be the T-Rex. And I'm all really, uh, okay, this is not a T-Rex. This is, I don't know what this is. Um, I mean, you can guess if you know what we've been scanning, you can guess that is probably the T-Rex, but it's not the T-Rex. So there is actually no detail at all. That's just one blob, just, it could be a banana to be honest. So small objects, not so much. Okay, now the, I didn't save the Banshee because the Banshee was unrecognizable. It didn't work at all. This actually is the glass. So what it detected was probably something from the table, but not the glass itself. Uh, so that's not usable. So the last one should be the, the watering pot. And if you look at it, well, that could be uh, anything, but it's probably not a watering pot. It's some abstract figure of a, I don't know, fantasy figure. Right, let's call this a fantasy figure. So to answer the question, is this worth your money if you want to do 3D scanning? I would say no, because there is much better solutions, uh, even cheaper solutions. This is $1,000. Um, you can use your existing smartphone and just do photogrammetry, which is taking 100 photos of an object from different angles and then running it through a software that computates a 3D object. And that's working much better than what I've seen here. So it takes longer 
uh, you have to calculate a few hours maybe of calculation time depending on the size of the object. So anything from 30 minutes to a few hours is possible, but the, the results will be much more decent. So I'm gonna cover that topic photogrammetry in another video, of course. Uh, we also have a look at the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One uh, Connect sensors which have pretty similar camera actually what we've seen here from the Note 10 Plus. So I just want to do that comparison and watch out for that video. But so far I would say this is going back. I'm not keeping it because I think for the, the use case that I bought it for to test it out, I clearly can say it's not for me and it's probably not for you. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like my videos, like and subscribe. And if you want to support me further, go to my Patreon page, check that out. And I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye bye.